In this video, we're going to be learning about loops, which is a programming concept that we're going to be using all the time as developers. Loops allow us to continually run a block of code until a condition of our choosing is met. This is great for things like input validation, counting, accumulating, dating, brushing your teeth. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Most of us don't consciously think about what we're doing when we brush our teeth. We've done it a thousand times and it just kind of happens itself, right? But if you take a minute to slow down and think about it, what is the logical process of brushing our teeth? Let's break it down into steps, which, by the way, is always a great way to start solving a problem. The first step is you grab your toothbrush. Next, you start brushing a row of your teeth. But do you stop after you've just done one row? No, you move on to the next one, and you repeat this process until you've done all the rows of your teeth. If we think in terms of rows, we each have six rows of teeth in our mouth, upper and lower on the left, in the front, and on the right. So do you think that if we told someone that to clean their teeth, all they have to do is repeat the row brushing process six times, and when they finish, all their teeth are going to be clean? Not necessarily, right? I mean, if that person had salad for lunch that day, maybe, but if they drank a lot of coffee or something like that, you know, that stains your teeth, those little pearlies are going to need a little extra brushing to bring out that shine, right? The point is, you only stop the brushing process once all of your teeth are clean. To determine when this is, you have to check. Loops work the same way. There's a process and a check. If the check is true, the process repeats. So for this example, our check would be, if our teeth are not yet clean, repeat brushing. Because if that's true, our teeth are still dirty and we need to keep brushing. If we made a flowchart for the toothbrushing process, it would look like this. We start with our toothbrush. Scrub, scrub, spit out the toothpaste, and then take a good look at our teeth. If they're not clean, we go back and we start the process over again. If they are, we exit the process and we stop. So a loop is just a set of conditions or code that you continue to repeat over and over until all of your conditions come true. Sound anything like dating? In a recent video, we learned about relational operators. Remember we wrote up conditional statements and evaluated them to see if that condition was true or false? If this isn't ringing a bell yet, an example of one of these conditional statements from real life would be, if you don't have good hygiene, then going on a date with you is going to be a hard false. So how do we illustrate this as a loop? Well, when you think about the dating world, what are some trends that we see there? The one you probably hear about the most is online dating. Common yet risky, right? You don't know anything about that person, they may be nothing like their profile. So before we go out on a date with them, you've kind of got to feel it out by chatting them up a bit, right? And as you start to get to know that person, the checks start. How do I feel about them? Am I enjoying this process? Do I want to continue to get to know them? In programmatic terms, you're evaluating this potential partner against your personal standards and desires. So what's important to you? And how does this person align with that? This part of the online dating process is an important pre-check that's actually something that we do in loops too. See, I'm going somewhere with this. There are three loops that we're going to cover today. The first two are known as while loops. While loops are condition-based, meaning they're going to continue to run as long as a certain condition remains true. But at what point in the process do we check if that condition is true? Well, in online dating, you decide if you're interested before you go on the date. We take that same approach in a pre-check while loop. We're going to make sure that our condition here is true before we do anything within the scope of that loop. If the condition is evaluated to be true, so in this case, going on the date equals y, yes, we want to go on the date, then we take the next step and we enter our loop. If this condition had been false, 
for whatever reason, and guys, you don't have to explain anything to anyone, then there's no reason to continue. So in that case, this would have just kicked us down to the bottom of the loop. All right? Now, another way to meet people is through people that you already know. So say one of your friends knows somebody that they think you'd really hit it off with. At least you know they're going to look like their picture and that they're not a murderer. So you agree to show up at the place and time. In this case, you are doing it. You're doing it because you trust your friend not to do you dirty, so you're willing to at least give this recommended person one chance, right? Then, at the end of the date, you decide whether you want to see this person again. This is the post-check while loop but better known as the do while loop because we're doing it, we're running it at least once, and then we're gonna check and see if we should do it again. Remember, in a loop, if the condition is true, we're gonna run it. By the way, each time that a loop is run, we call this an iteration. So if we say that a loop has iterated five times, that means that it ran five times. I mention this now because we need to know this for our next loop. So I think we'd all agree that dating can be kind of nerve wracking, right? Like there can be a lot of pressure and sometimes that can keep us from presenting our best selves. And that's why there's an oldie but goodie dating practice known as the three date rule. Three dates is enough to get to know each other a bit and kind of shake those nerves, but without leading the other person on. After three dates, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. You gave it a fair shot. Just like the three date rule, the final loop that we're gonna learn is also based on running a certain number of times. This type of loop is known as a for loop. Since it's a loop, a for loop also continues to run as long as a condition remains true. But unlike our while loops that use variables for their conditions, a for loop is iteration based. And what are iterations? The number of times that a loop runs. A for loop is a pre-check loop. So we're gonna check if our iteration based condition is true before we run anything. So just like our while loops, our condition is gonna go in parentheses. But what kind of condition is that? Well, actually, the condition is only one part of what's going on here. So let's take a closer look. Now, we can see that this really is just three statements in one line. It looks a lot more intense than it actually is. If we look at these as individual blocks, we see first that we have a declaration of an int variable called i, and it's been initialized to zero. Not too complex, right? We know of this. Next, we're gonna check our statement. This expression says i is less than num dates, which is our constant for our three date rule, right? And we know from relational operators that this is a conditional statement. This makes it an evaluation. This part right here is the condition that must be true for our for loop to run, all right? Now this next one is new. What's happening isn't new, but the way that it's written is new. So this syntax is coding shorthand for i equals i plus one. So increasing a variable's value like this is called incrementing. And now that we know that, we're gonna do it a lot. The opposite of incrementing is decrementing. And that's where we decrease the value of a variable by one. So instead of using plus plus for incrementing, for decrementing, we use two minus signs. And this is simply, all right, pretty nifty, right? You can put these shorthand symbols 
next to any numerical data type, doubles, ends, floats. Now, before we move on, just to recap, when the compiler gets to this statement, it is first going to declare and initialize i to 0. Then it will check to see if i is less than num dates, which, since we just initialized it to 0, it's definitely going to be the first time it runs, right? Since that condition is going to be true, our loop is going to run, and then i will be incremented by 1. Now, even though we've written it up here, that's actually not going to happen, though, until the loop completes. Once we move into the scope of this for loop, then we are going on the date. When we get to the end, i increments to 1, and then we pop back up to evaluate our condition again to see if it's true. So when we finish our first date, i is going to be 1. That's less than the value of num dates, which we've initialized to 3. So this would run again. At that point, i is going to be equal to 2. So when we get back up here, that condition is still true. Then we do our final iteration, because when we finish that one and get back up here, i is going to be equal to 3. And this makes our condition false when we check it, because even though i is equal to 3, that is not less than. Now that we know our condition is false, it would just kick us down here to the end of our loop, and we're going to move on with our program, or, well, in this case, our lives, if it didn't go well, right? But Houston, we have a problem. We're about to tackle the hardest part of loops. I see a lot of learners miss this, and it is the most important part. When crafting loops and going on dates with internet strangers, you always got to have a way out. Right now, our user has no way to turn the condition of our loop from true to false. Let's walk through it. So if go on date is equal to y, the loop is going to run. Now there is nothing right now within the scope of this loop that allows the user to change the value of go on date to make this condition false. No CN, no statements, nothing. So basically, in this case, if you go on this first date, you're going to be locked into an infinite dating loop with Tinder Ted over here, okay? This is, that's why this is serious stuff. So we need to give ourselves an out. And let's just do it middle school style with a check yes or no, shall we? There we go. So now, the user has the choice on whether to continue or not. Yay for consent. You must always, always, always provide the user a way to make the condition false. Very important to remember. So, just to recap, we learned about three forms of condition-based loops in C++. First, we have the classic pre-check while loop, which will evaluate its given condition if that condition is true, the code within the scope of that loop will run. Next, we have our do while loop, which is our post check loop. And it executes its code once. It just does it. And then it evaluates its given condition. If the condition is true, it runs again. Finally, we have our for loop. And it has a condition too, but its condition is based on the number of iterations that we want the loop to go through, or how many times we want it to run. And most importantly, whenever we're exposing our users to loops, we always, always need to give them a way out. That's it for this video, everyone. I had so much fun putting this together for you. This is one of my favorite lessons. I love that we're getting to the good stuff. Today, I'm going to leave you with both a challenge and an invitation. We had to go back to our while loops to add an out for our user, right? We had to provide them the opportunity within the scope of our while loop to make that condition of the loop false. My challenge to you is, how would you handle that in a for loop? If you think about it, the condition for a for loop is based on its iterations, right? Well, who am I to say that you couldn't manipulate some of the values of that condition from, you know, within the scope of the loop, just like with our while loops? I mean, I don't know. Try it yourself and see what you come up with. If you tackle it and get stuck, or if you want to see my solution, I invite you to watch the next video where we're going to be building out a dating app. We're not going to be swiping right, but we are going to use input and conditions. For me, 
When it comes to looping back around and doing another video for y'all, you're a worthy investment and you have value, so I would always input why. I hope you do too. Don't take that condition out, and I'll see you next time.